Well, welcome everyone. We are so glad that you have joined us this afternoon. We are going to go ahead and get started with today's topic, um, all about interactive response item updates. Um, you may have heard this referred to as technology enhanced items from the TEA and the future updates that will be aligned to STAR. So this afternoon, we are excited to share with you some things we have going on here at Edgephoria and are aware. So this afternoon, um, I am Tara Whedon, and I am on the training and implementation team, and I am joined with my teammate and friend, Emily Cram. She is one of our product managers over curriculum, instruction, and assessment. We're excited to um, be together this afternoon to share this information with you. This afternoon, if you could please use the Q&A window to post questions or comments on today's topic, we do have team members that are available to respond um, and that will be able to um, answer those questions in a timely manner for you or bring them to our attention if we need to address them as a whole group. Um, if you have questions specific to things going on in your district, um, then please contact us through training at edgeforia.net. We are going to use the Q&A today to um, hold conversations relevant to our topic. So getting started, we'd like to hear a little bit from you. How do you feel on test days? If you are like Buddy the Elf and super, super excited to um, show up for a test, let us know. Maybe you're like SpongeBob SquarePants and you feel like this is just going to be another boating licensing exam that you are not quite prepared for. Or maybe you have that Austin Powers groovy thing going on and you are just ready to tackle any assessment that comes your way. Or that test day comes around and you are feeling just to get it all done like this kid over here. Let us know how you feel on test day. And maybe this is you sitting down to take that test. Maybe this is how you feel on a star test day on your campus. We wanna know how are you feeling when you are encountering these assessments? Looks like we've got lots of Buddy the Elfs in here, some groovy Austin Powers, a little bit of this kid really rushing to get it all done at the end. Awesome, guys. Thanks for sharing. We're excited to see those responses coming in. So now we're going to transition to our objectives for this afternoon. Okay, you can feel free to keep answering. I see a couple SpongeBob's coming in. It's great. It's, it's fun to at least have a fun, laughable moment. Um, here are some of our objectives for the day. So by the end of this webinar, um, our goal is for you to be able to discuss the unique item types currently available in AWARE to be able to apply interactive response questions as part of a varied assessment plan and to be able to share out with others the future development plans that we have regarding these new question types with all the other people in your district that should be interested in this topic. Um, as we move forward, I, we love to reiterate that um, we always are proud to say that the educator and the student are our main concern as we adjust and as we grow and as we release future features. We always keep the heart of learning and the heart of teachers in mind. So that's one of the reasons I'm proud to be working for Edgephoria is this is our goal statement and this is how we really see our mission and our vision. Um, so with this being said, all of our practices that we cover today and future development, just keep in mind that it's with the student and the educator in mind for best practices and supporting you through all the new future endeavors that we continue to, um, to learn and to infer. So here are some of the pieces that we have that we'll speak about today. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, our item types that um, we have currently available and that we'll be creating. We'll also be talking about the scoring components of those items and then the analysis component. So one piece I love to reiterate here is we don't um, ever want to release a part of a feature to you and not have it complete. So anything that we release as future plans and anything that we have available, we try to make sure that all of these components are there for you to really go through the whole cycle that you need to for scoring and evaluating student growth. 
Okay, and now we're going to hop into some examples, like Emily said, of what is currently supported within the system. Um, so one of the item types that is being proposed is multi-select. Um, this has been living in the system for quite some time when you build a selected response item. Um, so when you make that designation for um, a selected response, you can choose between multiple choice or multiple selection. So here we have a math example. This is formatted um, directly after some of the examples that TEA has provided for what this item should look like. And um, so here we have an example again from math from the TEA. We can see our answer choices here appear as check boxes for that multiple selection option for students. And so on this one, it's set up like a multiple choice other than students are going to have the opportunity to make more than one answer selection when they approach this question. So this, again, is something that is currently set up in the system under selected response, and you would choose multiple selection. The next example that we have is a science example. And so this is another area where we could use this multiple selection. And notice on here, I designated um, some directions for the student to select up to two correct answers. So you can definitely um, prompt students with some general or targeted directions on how to approach these items. Um, in the example before, we just said <clears throat> choose as many answers as are correct, and here we're prompting them to select two answers. So here this image is taken from our online preview and we can see what this looks like for students in that online testing environment um, as they make those selections and they still have the option to eliminate their answer choices as they are using their strategies to answer um, this multiple select um, option here. The next thing we're going to look at is what does this multi-select or multiple selection look like from the teacher's point of view for enter answers. So here we can see a teacher that is going through and designating responses and then scoring a student. So this is a student that did not approach the, um, did not take the assessment online. We've collected their um, answers in another format and we are designating with those check boxes their responses. We also have that preview item icon and we could view the, the assessment um, items there as well. So this is what it's going to look like for the teacher to capture the student responses in the enter answers area. The next thing we're going to look at is our data analysis. So here we have a report and the student individual responses report. And we can see there's several variations of how students performed on this assessment. If I'm looking at this as a teacher, I can quickly see that item two had the most inaccuracies um, from student responses. One of my pieces of data here might be that several students didn't choose up to three options, which they needed all three options to score correctly on this item. Um, so that could be a great reflection for me to take back to my instruction and how am I preparing students for this assessment. Um, and maybe it was just they really thought they answered all parts of it, or maybe I need to help them with some strategies when they see this type of question. I can also see here that one of my students only designated one response for all of these multi-select items, and that might be a great teachable moment for me to have a one-on-one -on -one or find other students in the same situation for a small group, just kind of regroup um, on what they are needing to work on. So when you are building your assessment, you will be able to designate your weight for these items. But as we can see here, a student must designate all the correct responses to receive credit for this item. And before I move forward, team, are there any um, questions that we should address with the whole group? The next item type that we are going to discuss is our multi-part. So we're gonna talk about formatting for a moment. Um, from the TEA for their multi-part items, these are going to be um, two parts with part B being dependent on part A. So right now in the system, this can be achieved by generating a resource and linking two items to that resource in any of the available formats. So we can have multiple choice, multiple selection, which we just covered, and constructed response as part of our options for um, a multi-part item. Um, 
and we can have those in any combination. So we might start the student with multiple selection and then follow that part B with a multiple choice or vice versa. We might even start students with a three item multiple choice and then follow that up with a constructed response item for them to justify or explain their thinking for part A. So next we have some examples of what this could look like. So here we have a science example. We have a resource that is a food web. So we have an image for them to reference. At the top of the resource, I've provided instructions for students so that they understand this is a multi-part item and that they will have two questions to answer here. Also at the bottom, I've provided the text of the two questions they will be responding to so they can have a preview of what that part B looks like as they are answering part A. And then once they answer part A, then they will navigate to the next question and uh, make their designation for part B. So in this example, they have two multiple choice items. One has three options and one has four options. And so that's Part B, they're justifying what they selected in Part A. Next, we're going to go on to a social studies example. So here we have an image of a primary resource for students. Again, we have instructions at the top introducing them to what is included in this, in this resource and what's the expectation for this multi-part item. And we also have the text for Part A and Part B. In this example, students are starting Part A with a multiple choice item. And then they are doing a constructed response to justify and explain their thinking from part A. So here we've seen two different ways to navigate this multi part with two multiple choice and then with a multiple choice followed by a constructed response item. The next thing we're going to look at is scoring. So here we have images from our test key tab. So you can clearly see what um, items are connected to each resource. If you need that reference, if you are going to be using the enter answers area to score students, or if you want that as part of your reflection and your data analysis, that test key tab is a great place to reference and see how items were linked um, within the assessment. And then on the right, we have a graphic from the enter answers area. So one thing that will be very helpful here is to designate within your item, your part A and your part B. So that's clear for students. And it's also clear for you um, as you are going back and scoring students. So here I have turned on that item preview using the icon on enter answers. And I can clearly see um, the order of this. Because if your entire assessment is not set up with multi part, you want to make sure that you're seeing where that is occurring. Now we're going to look at scoring. So as we talked about before, all of these are set up at this point in time to be full credit awarded for student responses. So here we have another example of these student individual responses and we're seeing how they performed on each individual item. And I have also pulled because we have that constructed response example. I've also pulled the constructed response report that is available for all teachers. So anytime a constructed response item is on an assessment, a teacher may generate the constructed response port report to view what students have recorded on their assessment. So these can help in that data analysis. And again, students are receiving full credit for their responses, so it's either correct or incorrect. Um, this is a great opportunity to discuss with your PLC teams or with your district curriculum or assessment teams. How do we want our local assessments to reflect scoring um, for our data analysis in these areas? Um, the TEA has not yet released how these multi-part will be scored. Um, so this is a great chance locally to define what does this look like for our assessments in real time as we're delivering them throughout the year. So one option might be to change the weight of your multi part to zero and then add in an area for the teacher to go back and designate um, as a constructed response and put in a zero if they got both A and B wrong a one if they only got part A correct, and a two if they got part A and B correct. So again, this is a great, um, it really begs for those professional conversations to take place on what do we want this to look like for students? How are we going to report feedback back to our students for these multi-part items and really come up with a plan of 
what does data analysis look like for us and our math department uh, when we are examining these types of items? Great, and we had a couple of questions come in related. Uh, Tara, if you wanna go back mm -hmm. two slides, um, I can address a few of these. I know one question that came in was about randomization, if randomization mm -hmm. will work with these types of questions. And if you look at the screenshot on the left, uh, Tara has really highlighted for you our grouping mechanism that ties questions to resources. And if your test is set up with this linking component, and that is that little um, chain option next to the pencil, if that connection is made to your resources, then randomization works perfectly. So by linking your questions to the resource, it really makes sure that it ties them together throughout randomization. So that feature does work with multi-part if you set it up this way. And the other question that was asked is, could you have more than part A and part B? And absolutely, you could link as many parts as you would like. Um, just making sure that you, you know, discuss the scoring component and how you want to handle the scoring component. But yes, you could have part A, part B, and part C. This is just our way of showing you some of the options that the system has right now. Um, in addition, I did see a lot of questions related to scoring and plans for scoring options in the future. And I'll be covering that in the next section. All right. So on to aware development. So those are the question types that we really wanted to showcase that are currently available. Um, we've had lots of questions that have come in about what options do we have pertaining to those unique item types that TEA has listed out. And so we wanted to be sure that we showed you those and highlighted your options with those two question types. And now I'm gonna walk you through some of the aware development and talk to you about what our plans are for future questions and the pathway of where we're going. Um, so in this first little screen video that we have for you, it's showing you our new item bank updates. So this was released fairly recently. So if you haven't, um, go take a look at your item bank tab that you haven't aware. It has really been updated and given a facelift. And this was stage one for making sure that we were prepared for interactive questions. Our item bank tab has to support them before we can move forward with development. So some things that you will see when you go to the item bank tab is not only do we have full searchability, which we really didn't have before. We have those filters and um, the ability to really navigate through those questions. But we also have really worked to make sure that the functionality behind creating your own local item bank is fully supported and works great. So that's always an option if you see um, a development need for questions related to your district, you can create your own local item bank that will be showcased in both the item bank tab and in the test editor. So definitely go check out that first release as it should be available to all districts now. Okay, so here's some of the future item types that we have been given from TEA most recently. You'll see that the first three that we have listed, multi-select, multi-part, and constructed response, we currently have these options available for you right now. Um, in this table, I also included a brief description and the subject areas that TEA is suggesting right now for these types of questions. Um, as we move forward today, we are really excited to showcase our hot text question that will be deployed um, out to you very, very quickly. So we are really excited. So that will no longer be a coming soon. That one will be available to you. And then drag and drop text entry and inline choice are going to be the next three that we're going to have coming um, this summer. And those are going to be our next items to prioritize. So some great information to have with those three is that as we get done completing the development for these types of questions, we're going to just be releasing them. So you will start seeing new questions available and they will just start popping up. So um, we do work in cycle work. So these three are going to be our next cycle. And that's going to be really our goal is to focus on getting some of those out to you as quickly as we can. We understand that you want to get assessments together for next school year and you want to have those to be able to field test. So we understand that as well. On the very next slide are just the other um, question types that TEA has announced. And so we have those listed here as we know that those are going to be the next, you know, upcoming need that we will be developing. Um, 
And at the bottom of this, because we do send out our presentation to you after the webinar is done, there is a help guide article that we have put together related to House Bill 3906. So our development is really focused on what TEA puts out, but more importantly, best practices as well. So you can go to our article to get updates. And also we have links to all the resources that TEA has put out. So if you wanna see some of their live question types and you haven't seen that yet, it's in the article there for you. Okay, so here's some of the real meat and potatoes behind development. So as we work toward creating these new item types, we just like you to know that there are multiple pieces involved. And so we have really switched our direction here. So if you had attended some of our prior webinars or if you've gotten our emails, um, all of that information relayed that our focus was going to be taking in item bank questions that align to these areas. And so about mid-cycle, we decided to really change our direction because we had so much high momentum in our development that we decided to just go ahead and make the full functionality available. So I hope that's a celebration for you. It, it was for me that we can get this out to you as quickly as possible and not prioritize item banks, but give you the whole nine yards. So that includes the ability to create and edit questions on an assessment the ability for students to log on and take these questions, see them in full action and online testing. Then a teacher will be able to score the responses and enter answers. And also, of course, the reporting functionality to exist to show you how a student answered the question, whether it was correct or incorrect. Um, and then last, as each item type comes in, then item bank vendors that also support these question types will be brought in as well. We are prioritizing the Certica Navigate item bank because they have the most questions right now that align in these unique item types. So as you see hot text available, then you will also very quickly see when you're searching the item bank, if you have Certica Navigate, you'll see those questions that you can pull in and you can edit them. So you'll have full editing capability for an item bank question as well. Okay, and then just an update on the student constructed response. We had talked about that um, in one of our previous webinars. So we will look to release this um, in June because we did not want to interrupt end of year testing that you had going on. This is just a preview of what the constructed response box will look like for a student moving forward. So you see that they'll have bold, underline, italics, bullets, indent. They'll have um, some great new features that they can utilize, which closely aligns to TEA, but also enhances their options. We give you more options. We're gonna give you word count as an option and then character count too, moving forward. So a teacher can decide what that word count or character count is for that question. So again, that will be coming to you in June. Um, you'll be able to see that as an update as well. And I just wanna repeat one of the things that Emily just stated because we had a question um, about it with the word count and the character count, that's something you'll be designating that limit for the assessment that you're generating. So we're not going to have in those limits for you. There might be reference documents that state a character count um, based on a certain type of item, whether it's text entry or a constructed response that's longer. Um, so you'll have that local authority to decide for each constructed response item you add what that character count limit or word count limit is for your individual item. Okay, so without further ado, yay, drum roll. Um, our next, um, question that we will have available um, just to give you some information. This will be released tomorrow. So um, tomorrow during the day, you will be able to see this new question type. The way that you navigate and get there is twofold. You'll be able to go to both the item bank tab and you'll be able to go to the question editor in the test development. And you'll see um, where we have our drop down menu for our different question types. You're now going to see a new option, and it's going to be called interactive response. When you select that option, you will see a landing page that we have in the middle of the screen showing you the ability to select hot text. 
And then we have some other options that are, are coming soon, just a little placeholder so you can have that information. And um, what we're very excited about is we were really prioritizing usability. So we wanted our user interface to be as simplistic as possible because this is a new change for everyone. And um, thinking through what, what we need as far as the editing piece is really going to be a brand new thing for all of us. So we don't want you to get caught up in the editing. We would rather you get caught up in the content and what that looks like inside your question. So with that being said, you'll see hot text here. It has its own little preview icon. And after you select, the learn more option than the pop up that's over here on the right will show you exactly what that question will look like. And we tried to give you a brief explanation about how it functions. And then we added a piece that tells you it says best for reading social studies and math. Does that absolutely mean you should use it on those those content areas? No, it works for every single content area. We're trying to bridge the gap and give you information here. This is the subject areas that TEA says you can expect to see hot text. So my goal in really putting this piece together was for you to be able to see a question and never have to click backwards. So you can have some guiding information text so that it's right at your fingertips. You're no longer having to go back um, for any reason and say, oh, I chose the wrong question. Hopefully we really bridge that gap and make it very simplistic for you to navigate through the system and choose the right question type. Um, all right, we can keep going. Perfect. So then after you choose your question, you have um, at that point, it's really a two step process. The first step is choosing your question type. And then you'll see um, the typical uh, text editor and the second option in the bottom left corner, which says type your question here. And of course, do that editing component that you want associated with your question. And after you are done with that second step, you navigate to the third step, which is adding your interaction type. So um, we really tried again for usability to pave the way for teachers that are new to this, as most of us are, with what exactly does this look like and how does editing function? So we allowed you the ability to construct your question. And then of course, with all of these new question types, you have to add the interaction. So what are you expecting students to interact with and what are they expected to do? So in the third option, you get to highlight your text, just um, very similar to content clarifiers and a pop-up shows up and you get to add a new hot text area. And when you do that, you're designating that that is a potential answer choice. And so you get to decide how many answer choices align for your question. And one of the great usability options is the system is very interactive and dynamic. So as you select that there are potentially two questions or two answers that could be correct for this question, then the directions are dynamic and they change. And they will say select up to two correct answers. And that changes for you based on your choices here on the right. So how many are the correct answer that you get to apply? All of those are easily editable after you've um, written them out and they will be highlighted in blue on your preview screen for what you have designated as the correct answer. So again, we really tried to make this simplistic and um, this particular question does look identical to what TEA put forward and we're pretty proud of that. And they did a great job actually with the hot text question. So we mimicked that. So if you have gone and previewed their examples Ours really looks identical. Okay, so the next piece is going to be what does it look like for the student? What is their experience like? So you can see our question here and we are really proud to say that um, all of these options that I have designated on the right work for these new hot text questions. So a student can change the color contrast. They can also fully use text to speech with this question. They can zoom in, they can zoom out. They can add a note, they can see the question guide, they can flag a question, and they can also see reference documents and everything that we um, have as far as messaging, because we will guide the student through, you can only select so many answer choices for this question, we're, we're giving them some messaging to support that. And those messages will be translated in Spanish. So for your Spanish speakers that are getting that Spanish interface, then we have already translated those into Spanish for you. 
Okay, and then we also have three more online testing features that work with hot text as well. So we're excited about this. Um, you can see that I, we kind of spoke to already question randomization. It does work with Fidelity for hot text. So that's um, not an issue. Again, that linking component, if you have a resource, is really what you want to utilize there. And then the student score summary works too. And these images are a preview of what that score summary shows. If you haven't utilized that feature, um, I absolutely love that feature. It allows students um, after they've taken the test to go back in and see which answer choices are correct um, and which ones are incorrect. And so if you turn that on for a student, this is what it will look like for correct responses and incorrect responses. So they can go back in and after the testing window, if you've enabled this feature, it will work with hot text as well. And then finally, Lockdown Browser um, will still work with Fidelity for interactive questions moving forward. So we just want to make sure that you know that that is a functionality that will work as well. Okay, so here's Enter Answers. Um, I'm very excited about how Enter Answers um, came together. It came together very nicely. So when a teacher goes and looks at a student response, you get to see exactly what they selected in the question. So it's highlighted in blue. The student selected 800 um, as their answer choice, but there were multiple options that could have been an answer for this question. And so not only can the teacher see that response, they can also select more. So for your kiddos that are brand new to hot text and interactive questions in general, um, you might wanna give them some support on this answering and where this ability is turned on for a teacher to be able to edit student answers. You can do that with these as well. So we are very excited that full functionality is occurring for intern answers. Okay, and then really um, one of the last chunks is the Certica Navigate items. Um, this is kind of what it will look like with our new item bank um, facelift. You will have searchability functions and one of them that will be added under question type is interactive response. And so if you search by interactive response, you're going to get um, these questions that align for the different content areas that Certica has available for hot tech. So you will be able to, starting tomorrow, navigate through your item banks and see what questions already exist. And then last but not least, we have to have our scoring component available for you to see for data analysis. And so here is a little preview of what it will look like. Um, with fidelity to what already exists in the system. Under the data analysis component, all of the drop down um, canned responses or canned reports, I'm sorry, under quick views, all of those work for interactive questions. So you can see I listed those on the right, the student scores. The one I really wanted to focus on was the student individual responses. So that's the screenshot I have right here for you to show you that the question was interactive. You're gonna get a red if the student missed the question. You're gonna get green if they got it correct. So it works, it adjusts to all of the percentages that you need for learning standard breakdown, for reporting category breakdown. Um, as well, so that functionality will exist. Um, and then finally, teachers will also have the ability to run the incorrect responses report, and it's going to pull up if a student missed this interactive question for teachers to be able to navigate through that and analyze their data accordingly. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the updates. We want to let you know that help is always available to stay up to date with these news and announcements as these new features are being made available. You are welcome to um, sign up for our Edu News by going to our online help guide. You can also follow us on any of our social media streams to get updates and have some fun interactions with our Eduphoria team. And we have a YouTube channel. So videos like the recording of this webinar are always available through our YouTube channel. Um, and you will be receiving a recording link um, in 24 hours um, if you were registered. So if you're here, you're registered, that link is on its way to you tomorrow. Um, 
We are still addressing your questions in the Q&A, so continue to send them. If we don't answer it before we end here this afternoon, we do have a record of all of these and we can make sure to get that information sent over to you through the contact information you shared in your registration. Um, so don't worry about us not getting to it since we are towards the end, we will definitely make sure you get a response to the questions that you have. And some upcoming events, we have additional webinars to help you end the year on a high note um, to help you wrap up all those end of year tasks in Eduphoria for all of our school object applications other than AWARE. So our forethought, our strive, um, our other um, school objects that are available to you. We will be going over those topics on May 26th at 2 p.m. And then we will have a webinar specifically for AWARE end of year task on June 2nd. So as you wrap up the year, making sure your system is ready to go for next year, um, those two webinars are gonna be very helpful for individuals that are helping run your systems and keep them well managed for all of your users. And then on June 16th, we will be having a webinar specifically for Axiom. So looking at accountability. So your aware data and Axiom is coming up on June 16th for you to understand what is necessary to have in your system so that you can have some predictions for your accountability purposes. And that is aligned to how TEA is going to be measuring accountability this year with an emphasis on the student achievement domain. So I know some of you are still sending in questions. Team, is there anything we want to recap as we wrap up? Um, I forgot to directly address the plans for the scoring component. So I'm happy okay. to cover that now. Um, as we've uh, reiterated right now, the scoring component will be correct and incorrect. We realize that leaves you in a place where you may want to give students more credit um, according to how many interactions they have within a question. And so with that being said, our plan for that is we want to get as many questions available to you as quickly as possible. So our goal right now is really getting through each one of these new interactive questions. When we we are done getting those questions available to you, then we are going to revamp our scoring component. Um, so that will look uh, quite a bit different. It'll align for all of your questions in the future and allow you to decide things like, does a student get partial credit? Are we going to opt in for penalty scoring? Is it all correct? Is it incorrect? Um, so we're going to um, increase that functionality in our system so that you can decide on a per question basis what scoring looks like. It's just for now, since we are rolling into the summer, again, our main focus is making sure that we are able to get you as many question types as you're going to be needing those very soon. And then we will work on the scoring component. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks. We'll stay on another moment to get through a couple more of these questions. Um, thank you guys for your interaction this afternoon. We always appreciate hearing from you. We really hope that you see yourselves as partners with us. Your feedback is very valuable into how we craft um, our updates and what we're able to make available to you in a timely manner. So thank you guys for not only your questions, but your insights, your feedback. Um, that is super, super insightful for us as we move forward and continue making these updates available to you. Um, any questions we don't answer before we wrap up, we will make sure to um, get a resource available to you. Thanks again for joining and hope you have a great end to your school year.